Americans are taught that the United States did Japan a favor by opening the door to Western culture, religion, and commerce in the mid-1800s. However, Japan was already trading with China and the Dutch, from whom they learned of troubles caused by allowing aggressive imperial powers access. Japan had enjoyed 220 years of internal and external peace when, in 1846, American Commodore James Biddle arrived in Japan with two warships seeking a treaty for American trade access. He was turned away, just like other emissaries from Western imperial powers before him. In 1853, Commodore Matthew Perry arrived in Japan with five warships painted black on a mission to force Japan to open American ships and merchants to access. Perry attempted to intimidate the Japanese by presenting a letter demanding trade access and warning them not to fire on his ships or they would be destroyed. He fired blank shots from his 73 cannons and ordered his ship's boats to commence survey operations along the Japanese coast despite objections from Japanese officials. Perry was ignored, so several months later he returned with a larger force of eight warships and 1,600 men and came ashore with 300 troops. The Commodore made it clear that he would not leave until a treaty was signed. The Japanese feared attack since its cannons and ships were much smaller and of older designs. Japanese military forces were controlled locally so there was no national army to coordinate a unified defense. Japan's military leader, called a shogun, decided it was best to sign a treaty with Perry to gain access to technology while organizing equipping a large modern army to defend Japan. The 1854 Kanagawa Treaty gave the American ships the right to trade at two Japanese ports. This was followed by the Harris Treaty of 1858, that gave Americans the right to live in Japan, own land, access to more ports, the right to build Christian churches, and to export Japanese silver and gold. European imperial powers quickly sent warships to Japan to secure their right of access. These agreements were signed by the Shogun, but were never approved by Emperor Komi, who feared Western influence would cause political and economic unrest. Many Japanese leaders also opposed these treaties, and they did cause social and economic turmoil. In one famous incident, an English merchant who refused to bow to a samurai was slashed and later died. Japan improved its military forces, and by 1863, Emperor Komi believed it was strong enough to repel an attack. He canceled treaties allowing Western access to Japan as part of his campaign to expel the barbarians. Japan's shogun refused to enforce this edict since he feared Western navies and the emperor was considered a religious leader. This angered local samurai who attacked foreigners and local shogunate officials. The Japanese general in charge of the key, Shimoneski Strait, complied and closed access to foreign ships. When the American cargo ship SS Pembroke entered, it was fired upon and fled. A French cargo ship and a Dutch warship were also fired upon and fled. At this time, the United States was engaged in a bloody civil war, and the worst fighting was at the Battle of Gettysburg. A few days after this battle, in July of 1863, Union warships attacked the Japanese. While the United States was engaged in a massive civil war back home, the U.S. Navy still maintained a warship in Japanese water to enforce treaty rights. The frigate USS Wyoming sailed into the strait and engaged the small Japanese fleet for almost two hours before withdrawing. It sank two enemy vessels and severely damaged another, along with inflicting some 40 Japanese casualties. The Wyoming suffered extensive damage, with five crewmen dead and six seriously wounded. A few days later, the French Navy retaliated for the attack on its merchant ship. A French force with 250 Marines aboard two warships landed near Shimosneska and destroyed a town and gun battery. On August 15, 1863, seven British warships bombarded the town of Kaoshima and sank three Japanese ships. The British lost 20 killed and 53 wounded. By May 1864, Japanese factions had destroyed lots of foreign property 
including homes, churches, and shipping. On September 5, 1864, a fleet consisting of nine British, four Dutch, and three French warships with 2,000 soldiers and Marines arrived to reopen the Shimoseki Strait. The two-day battle destroyed much of the small Japanese military. It was unable to match the firepower of the international fleet, and amid mounting casualties, Japan surrendered. The Allies suffered 72 casualties aboard two severely damaged British ships. After these losses, the Japanese reopened port access and paid huge reparations. This surrender ignited a bloody civil war in Japan, and the shogun was ousted. The emperor emerged as the supreme ruler of Japan. Western imperial powers had prevailed, but were always looking to profit. Over the next three decades, they sold the Japanese their most advanced weaponry and equipment. The Japanese copied these to mass-produce their own weaponry to equip a rapidly growing national army and navy. Eventually, some of their technology surpassed that used by Western powers. The Japanese government embraced militarism for security and national pride, but also to secure needed resources for industrialization and markets for manufactured goods. Vast new lands were conquered that required an ever larger army and navy. Japan began to compete with Western imperial powers for territory and resources, which led to a small war with Russia in 1904, which Japan won in 1905. By 1896, all Western imperial powers had formally accepted Japan as a powerful state and the unequal treaties were modified. The empire of Japan had grown so large that it threatened the Asian interests of Britain and the United States. American President Franklin Roosevelt countered by openly supporting China in its war with Japan. Roosevelt shipped massive amounts of arms to China to include hundreds of warplanes with American pilots, known as the Flying Tigers. Then he canceled the 1911 Trade Treaty and imposed a trade embargo. This deprived Japan of vital materials and oil that would lead to economic collapse. Japan took a desperate gamble. It attacked American forces in Asia in late 1941 and seized the Dutch East Indies that had the resources it needed. This didn't end well for Japan, as it was destroyed as an empire and industrial power. Over 100,000 American GIs were killed during World War II to destroy the monster created by Western imperialism. In 1945, the flag flown by Commodore Perry's warship in 1854 was rushed to the American battleship USS Missouri and displayed during the Japan Surrender Ceremony. American warships then docked in Japan and sent troops ashore to reopen treaty ports as permanent military bases. The American CIA set up a large spy base at Camp Zama near Tokyo to monitor and influence Japanese politicians and generals. The American Empire prevailed, but then it helped Japan rebuild its military again. These American occupied ports remain today over 70 years after Japan's defeat. Japan is a wealthy and advanced nation that can defend itself. There is strong pressure from local Japanese to close these American bases. Will the Japanese expel the barbarians once again?